Blessed us, brothers and sisters in the Lord, we are greeting and welcoming each one of you in the powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Shall we stand for the word of prayer? <coughs> Beloved Heavenly Father, we are coming in thy presence this day, believing and trusting, Father, that you are going to speak to each one of us this day and give us clear instructions for the last few days that we are still have to live here on earth because we know that the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is imminent and they must be a bride of Jesus Christ that should be ready when he will come and for us to be ready to meet him in the air as it is recorded in thy scriptures. Father, we know that you know exactly those who are of your flock. As we are standing, Father, use us as your loudspeaker for those who were predestinated, ordained unto eternal life, to be with you in heaven, may hear thy voice. As the Lord Jesus Christ himself could say, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Come. Destroy whosoever will be standing here behind this people. Use us in a mighty way for the glory of Jesus Christ, thy only begotten Son, our Savior. We have prayed. Amen. Shall we sit? I'd like to bring the greetings from all over the earth. I could see we have more or less 50 connections as we are speaking right now. And uh, of course, greetings from all over. Special greetings from Brother Nazer Moko from Kinshasa. We see also Brother Sam Kitoko and other brethren connected online from Canada, USA, from Europe, from Africa, here in Australia, to start from Western Australia, Victoria, Queensland, you know, there are so many people who are connected to life. We are greeting each one of you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Shall we start with a song from our song books? Song number 362. 362. There is a country far beyond. 362. Yeah. 362. Is towards? 362. 362. Yes. There's a country far beyond the starry sky. There's a city where the name never comes in If we're faithful, we shall go there by and by. 
It is the city where the Lamb is the light. In that city where the Lamb is the light. The city where they can live no night. I have mission over there and am free from toil and care. I am going where the Lamb is the light. Yeah, we have a days of sunshine. We know that the sun that shines upon us not so bright will be changed to blood and red until we go to the city where the land is the light. In that city where the land is the light, the city where they can make no Over there and went free from toll and care. I am going where the land is the light. And the flower grew forever the day. Shall be one eternal day without a night. And that day shall be forever what are In that city where the land is the light. In that city where the land is the light, the city that is no night. I am mission over there and when free from dawn until I am going where the land is the light. Yeah, we have a disappointment for the one and I found the fault in the bitter blood. In that city where the lamb is the light. In that city where the lamb is the light. The city where they come and no night. I am mentioned over there and when free from toil and care. I am going where the lamb is the light. In that city where the lamb is the light. In that city where the lamb is the light. The city where they come with no man. I am mentioned over there and went free from toll and care. I am going where the lamb is the light. Yes, brethren, there is a city in heaven where the Lamb himself is the light, and there is no darkness that can go there at all. Shall we sing song number 79 from our song books? Song number 79, 79, down from his glory. Song number 79. <clears throat> Down from his glory, ever living story, my God and Savior came, and Jesus was his name. Born in a manger to his honest stranger. A man of sorrows, tears and agony. Oh, how I love him. Ah, how I adore him. My breath, my sunshine, my all in all. The great creator became my savior. And all God's fullness dwelleth in Condensation bringing us redemption that in the dead of night, not one faint talk inside. 
God precious tender, let us sight his splendor, stooping to wood to win to save my soul. Flesh and blood is substance. He took the form of man, revealed the hidden plan. Oh, glorious mystery, sacrifice of Calvary. And now I know. Yeah. 
blessed Jesus. We shall sing the same chorus as we are asking our precious brother Steve to come for the word of exhortation. <clears throat> Sweet this mountain sea of song. Sweet this name on mortal tongue. Sweet this name ever sung. Jesus blessed Jesus. I think that. Please stand for the day's word of explanation. Today's word comes from the first epistle of Paul to Timothy, chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. Amen. Verse 4. For the Spirit speaketh expressly that in, all, that in later times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of devils. Verse 2. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with red-hot irons. Verse 3. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God has created to receive with thanksgiving for, of them which believe and know the truth. For, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and power. A prayer, sorry. Verse 6. If thou puttest the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Amen. Nourishing up in the word of faith and of the good doctrine, Amen. wherewithin thou shalt attain. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Yes. First, here I'd like to go back to verse 1. Seducing spirits and doctrine of devils. You turn to Revelations 16 14. Revelations 16 14. Revelation 16, 14. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole of the world to gather them to the battle that is the great day of God Almighty. And the word there for seducing is deceiving. They will deceive right across. Verse 2. Speaking lies of hypocrisy, having their conscience. We go to Matthew, verse seven fifteen. And Jesus is speaking, saying. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, 
but outwardly they are raving wolves. Yes. <clears throat> then seared with hot irons, we turn to Ephesians 4.19. Who, being past feelings, have given themselves over to must have a couple of this word, brother. That's that's it. That's it. That's it. To work all uncleanness in greediness. Yes. In three, verse three. It says to abstain from meat, to abstain from the food that God has given. Verse 5. It's, it's a sanctified by the word of God and it is consecrated. It's another way of putting it. In verse 6, the final one, we come down to nourish up in the word of faith with the good doctrine. We turn to 2 Timothy, a couple of pages over. Verse 3, chapter 3 rather, verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learnt them. Yes. Amen. All praise be to God. Amen. Brothers Amen. and sisters, that is the word of today. Amen. Verse 1, 1 Timothy chapter 4. 
Now, the Spirit speaketh. This is the Spirit of God. It's not a man speaking here. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times, some shall, sorry, some shall, some shall depart from the faith. Can you imagine? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, without faith, no one shall please God. So it will come a time when people shall depart from faith. And faith comes from hearing, not to hear from, uh, I mean, uh, from uh, uh, fables, to hear the word of God. Listen, brothers and sisters, this is very important. People will depart from faith. Oh my. Can you imagine the disciples of Jesus Christ, whilst the Lord was still here on earth, could come and pray, ask from the Lord, increase our faith. It was one of the prayers, one of the wishes of the disciples. They said, Lord, Increase our faith. Listen, brothers and sisters. But the Bible, okay, you know what? Uh, yes. And now, the Bible is saying, sorry, uh, I, I must correct also, Hebrews 11, you know why I love the Holy Spirit? I said Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5, the Spirit of God is correcting me. Say it's not verse 5. You can see I have to stop and open the Bible. <laughs> yes, it's Hebrews 11 verse 6. Listen, the Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Oh, yes. Yes. I love my notes that I'm serving. Can you imagine how he corrects me eh? in front of all of you? I mentioned verse 5. He says not 5. You know? And then I had to correct it. And then when we continue, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Now the question is, how many in these days are seeking for the Lord Jesus Christ? Everyone is busy in his own program. Churches have got their own programs. How many are seeking the Lord? Listen, brothers and sisters, I beg you. Listen, the Bible says, oh my, my, my. I would like to read. Yes, let me go back to what uh, the brother was uh, reading because it's just very, very important. Now, listen. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, as the brother was reading from this one, listen, they depart themselves from faith and what are they doing? Giving heed to seducing spirits, plural. Instead of doing the right thing, they put aside the word of God 
of course they want to please God and they are ready to give heed to seducing spirits oh my oh my I will come back to that I will read 2 Timothy chapter 4 now this I will come back to 1 Timothy chapter 1 uh, chapter 4 2 Timothy chapter 4 now listen to the true servant of God to the true servant of God listen to what the Bible says from verse 1 I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead that is appearing and his kingdom listen brothers and sisters the day of judgment God will use one book that book is the Bible he won't use any book from any denomination just imagine if God must judge all of us according to the books of Roman Catholic Church I will say God you are unfair if God must judge us according to the books of Jehovah Witnesses I will say God you are unfair because I'm not a uh, part of the Jehovah Witnesses I'm not a, a Roman, Roman Catholic believer. I used to be one of them, but I'm no more. If God must judge all of us according to the book of uh, uh, Baptist or Methodist, I will say, God, you are unfair. God will use one book. And whatsoever that we are doing, it must be according to the Bible. When we read Acts chapter 2, verse 42, you will see the Bible say that the disciples of Jesus Christ continued in the doctrines of the apostles. And when you come in the Bible, the doctrines of the apostles, not a single apostle, not a single true servant of God in the Bible baptized a single baby. It is not recorded. Not a single true servant of God in the Bible did baptize a single believer in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Not a single true servant of God who was called to be a minister, preaching in the Word, according to the Bible, not a single woman has ever been a preacher according to the Bible. Now listen, verse 2. Preach the word. As we are standing here, we are preaching the word. The word is God himself in the written form. Recorded in the Bible. Remember, brethren, when we read John chapter 1, from verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, there was the Word. And when you continue John chapter 1, you come down, you see the Word, the Word was in the world. And people did not recognize Him. But unto them that received Him was given the power. To become the sons of God. We must preach the word. Not a single interpretation. Listen. Be instant in season. Out of season. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now listen verse 3. For the time will come. When they will not endure sound doctrine. Confirming what the brother was reading. Giving heed to seducing 
seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Listen, for the time will come. This is the time. You know, there was a time when the Lord Jesus Christ, when he went to the temple for the first time, they gave him the Bible. He opened, as I was reading, he was reading Isaiah 62, then he says, this scripture is fulfilled today. We can also say, when we are reading verse 3, we can say, this scripture is fulfilled today. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Listen. Sound doctrine is the truth. Jesus Christ could say in John, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Free from what? From the doctrines of devils. People are ready to give heed to false doctrines. People are heed, you know, are, are, are ready to give heed to false doctrines. You know, I was shocked one day when someone was telling me, yes, I know when I'm giving my, man, my money to the pastor, I'll be blessed. Listen, for those who are giving monies to their pastors in order for them to be blessed, you are just deceived. Because there is not a single scripture in the Bible that says when you are giving your monies to the pastors, you will be blessed. Those are the doctrines of devils. That's why you will never, never and never hear some of us preaching about money. I know the tithe must be paid to the church for the work of God. <laughs> okay, let me continue. For the time will come when they will not endure a sound doctrine, but after their own last, shall they heap to themselves teachers heavy itching ears, oh my God, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Can you imagine? You give someone the word of God, he hates you. It's like when we were reading in Jeremiah 26, I think last week or two weeks ago. The people could come to Jeremiah because you have told us the truth, we must kill you. You tell, you give the truth to people in order for them to become free, in order for them to be set free by Jesus. They don't like it. They prefer to follow the lies. You give someone the true word of God, he will tell you, yes, let me go and ask my pastor. <coughs> but uh, if your pastor knew about it, he could have told you. Listen, my precious brothers and sisters, I beg you, as the brother was mentioning, that uh, in the later times, we are at the end of the end time. This morning when I was preparing today's sermon, it was around 3 o'clock in the morning when I woke up. After preparing the sermon, and then uh, I was listening to the news. 
I could see the USA has sent to the Black Sea more than you know those big you know ships carrying more than almost you no know, they were talking about hundred sophisticated flights in the Black Sea. And of course, I can promise you, we, we, we saw last week China and uh, Russia, you know, signing a lot of, you know, uh, contracts and so forth. This reminds me one of the prophecies of Brother Branham in 1933. Brother Branham saw, God, God gave him in a vision, he saw the USA destroyed, he saw the USA ashes upon ashes being destroyed by Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea. He saw it in 1933. And let us just see how things are moving. Brothers and sisters, there is something terrible that is about to take place. But before that takes place, the Lord Jesus Christ must take his bride out of this earth. And that can happen at any time. As we are gathering in this fashion, listen, brothers and sisters, it's for our preparation. <coughs> now, the bride of Jesus Christ, which must be taken, must have the nature of Jesus Christ. The same way Adam could say, looking at Eve, say yes. This is the flesh of my flesh. This is the bones of my bones. Jesus Christ must have a bride. When he looked upon the bride, he could say, This is the flesh of my flesh. This is the bones of my bones. When you read the book of 2 Peter chapter 1, you will see how the Bible is talking about the divine nature that is supposed to be found in the bride of Jesus Christ. Remember Psalms 82 verse 6. The Bible says we are gods. In this time of preparation, we must, hallelujah, we must have the divine nature found in us. That's why we are not ready to receive any other seed. We must receive the pure seed of God. As 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2 says, preach the word. Not interpretation, not fables, the word. Because the word of God will set us free. Listen, brothers and sisters. God, this is a time of gatherings. Satan is gathering all his churches, listen, under the Roman Catholic Church. It might sound very harsh, but that's the reality. When you read your 
Bible carefully, you read the Revelation chapter 13, Revelation chapter 17, you will see it is talking about uh, the, you know, uh, uh, that prostitute with uh, her daughters. All the churches are going back to their mother, the Roman Catholic Church. Two gatherings. One under the leadership of Pope, and the second one under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Two gatherings are taking place right now through the Word of God. Jesus Christ is calling his own unto himself, saying in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come unto me. Others are gathering unto what they, they call Holy Father. Can you imagine? We have only, only one Holy Father who art in heaven. But how can you imagine someone here on earth to be called Holy Father? Does it mean that we have now two fathers? Listen, brothers and sisters, this is very, very critical. It's between life and death. And there must be someone to raise up his voice to warn the people. You know, this morning, I say, Lord, I know you know everything. I wish you can make a way here in Australia for me to have an opportunity to talk to the entire nation. Yes. That is my wish, to talk to the entire nation, to warn Australia that uh, something is about to take place. It's either we continue I mean, you continue doing what you are still doing and uh, you perish or you repent from whatsoever you are doing contrary to the Bible and come to Jesus. It was my prayer this morning to say, Lord, I wish you can give me an opportunity to you want to talk to the entire country. Something is about to take place. When we read in the book of Romans chapter 10, let us read it. Romans chapter 10, may God bless you, brother, you know, to show us really that in the latter terms, people will depart from the truth. You tell them the truth, they don't like it. Romans chapter 10. I would like us to read verse 8. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. The Bible says, I like it. But what saith it? The word. Remember, we read in 2 Timothy chapter 4, preach the word. The brother read for us that people will depart from the world, from the faith. But here, the world is nigh even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. What we are preaching is the word of faith. Listen, brothers and sisters, I beg you. When we read verse 15, listen to what the Bible says. Romans chapter 10, verse 15. <coughs> Bear with me. <coughs> Romans chapter 10, verse 15. <coughs> Sorry, before we read verse 15. 
I will start from verse 13. <clears throat> For whosoever shall call upon the Lord, um, the name of the Lord, shall be saved. 14. How then shall <clears throat> they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom, in him of whom they have not heard? And now shall they hear without a preacher? Amen. Amen. Listen, brothers. And how shall they preach <clears throat> except they be saints? The Bible is open before me. I can testify unto the entire country, the entire world. That I'm, I'm, I am among the saints ones. You may believe it or not. That's up to you. Listen. As it is written. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. And bring glad tidings of good things. <clears throat> Listen. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who had believed our report? <laughs> this is Isaiah chapter 53 verse 1. When you read Isaiah 53 verse 1, oh, maybe let me read it. Yes, I don't want to cut it. I must read it for you. Isaiah chapter 53, <clears throat> the Bible says, <clears throat> verse 1, Who had believed our report, <clears throat> and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? We, listen brethren, they must be a preacher. Who will come with the word of God. And what he is preaching. is bringing a report. But if you don't believe that report. God won't reveal himself unto you. But you know what is happening? Oh my. They prefer to give themselves teachers with the seducing spirits. They are ready to follow. <clears throat> now, listen to verse 17. So then, yes, brother, you know, I, I always say when you start, you know, 17, the Bible says, so then, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But how can you have faith if you don't hear from the word of God? People are ready to follow what they, you know, they call them headquarters. Have decided. Now, when you look up to the founders of this, of those headquarters, you will be shocked. Listen, brothers and sisters. When you find the founders of the, or those religions, you will be shocked. Recently, I think some few weeks ago, a very known, you know, preacher from one denomination, as he, as he is now appearing or he must appear to court or something like that because he has just been misusing the funds from his church, going to hotels and doing all these things. But people, they made him a, a millionaire. He doesn't know what to do with those millions 
anymore. He's living a luxurious life, promising them heaven that he himself will never enter. And people are deceived. Just imagine someone <clears throat> taking his Bible, going to his church, paying his tithes, offerings, giving monies to his pastor, of course, because they believe that uh, by doing so they will go to heaven. And then at the end of the day, when they die, to be found in hell. And the question that I've been asking myself is a lot. <clears throat> Honestly speaking, there is no more fear in the heart of men. Please, why people are not ready to play games in their politics, in their own businesses? They leave those things, they go. They put their nose, their businesses in the matters of God. <clears throat> Precious brothers and sisters, we must praise God. Because through the word of God, through the preaching, God is giving us everything. I would like to give you some of the benefits when we are obeying Jesus Christ. I will read from the book of Psalms 34. <coughs> Psalms 34. A scripture known to all of us. Listen, brothers and sisters, I beg you. Do you know why the devil is deceiving many? Because he knows he wants to be in heaven. Jesus Christ promised us in John chapter 14 from verse 1 to 4 to 3. Um, you know, you believe in God, you know, fear not. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. I'm going to prepare a place for you. As we're singing, in that city in heaven, the Lamb himself is the light. Just imagine, no night there. No cry, no sorrows. There we shall be happy, happy, not for one day, not for a thousand years, not for one million of years, but is forever. And the devil knows it. So his mission is to take as many as possible away from that. He will do everything to see the faith of people becoming zero. As we are reading here, faith comes from hearing from the word of God. But when people don't receive the word of God, you can't expect them to have faith. Now, Psalm 34, <clears throat> from verse 1. I love it. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. My soul, you know, the soul is inside of our hearts. You know, you see the hearts of men 
inside the heart, you see the soul. My soul shall make a boast in the road. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Verse 4. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Hallelujah! Each time when the Lord Jesus Christ was appearing to his disciples, the first Statement was, fear not. Fear not. Children of God, fear not. Oh my. Here, listen. To everyone that he delivered, you know, he takes responsibility of everything. Listen. Verse 5, they looked unto him and were like it, and their faces were not ashamed. Hallelujah. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Church of the living God, can we say amen to that? Amen. Listen, brothers, sisters. I know. All over the earth, the bride of Jesus Christ is going through terrible, terrible challenges. Church of the living God, bride of Jesus Christ, fear not. As we have just read, the Lord must deliver us out of all our troubles. Oh my. Can we go to verse 7? The angel of the Lord encompasseth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Hallelujah. First of all, listen, brethren, we must fear him. I see people. Who fear their pastors? I've seen it many, many times. A pastor can come and uh, curse someone and then uh, say, Yeah, because you have done this, because you didn't, you, you, didn't, uh, you know, uh, glorify me, because I've seen things. You can't believe it. Pastors cursing people. Whilst the Bible says, who can curse what God has blessed? If you are blessed, I am blessed, who can curse us? There was someone in the Old Testament who wanted to curse Israel. He couldn't. Balaam. Who are you? To curse a blessed one. Listen, brothers and sisters, <laughs> we must first of all fear God. Please don't fear a single man. We respect everyone, but we don't fear a single man. We fear God. That's why. When it comes to the word of God, I'm not prepared to give something which is outside of the word of God because I will have to answer. I must make sure that whatsoever that we are preaching, it must be the word of God because the word of God is the truth that comes from God himself and that truth will set each one of us free. Listen, brothers and sisters, the angel of the Lord encompasseth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Verse 8. Oh, tests. 
and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Brothers, sisters, despite all our problems, despite all our challenges that the devil is bringing towards us, we must put our trust upon the Lord Jesus. Amen. We must look unto him, the author and finisher of our faith, as it is recorded in Hebrews chapter 12. Listen, brothers and sisters. Oh, my. Because of time, I will have to... Oh, yes, verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord, ye is sent. Can I pause here? Brethren, as we are sitting here, are we convinced that we are the saint of God? Yes, we are the saint of God. Do you know why? When we read John 17, verse 17, Jesus sanctified himself for you and me. <laughs> Listen, brothers and sisters, that's why Paul could write to the saints in Corinth, to the saints, you know, in uh, Galatia, to the saints, you know, and so forth and so forth. Because we are the saint of God. Now listen. Oh, fear the Lord, ye saints. Can you imagine the second part? For there is no want to them that fear him. Can we say amen to that? Mm -hmm. Amen. So the provider is God himself. If he could provide for our father Abraham, he can also provide for you and me. That doesn't make us lazy, you know. We, we must make things clear. There are people who don't want to work at all. They become, you know, in their laziness. And they say God will provide. The very same God is expecting us to be in action. But at the same time, he will provide. But not just to be a lazy person. Okay, that is another subject. Let me continue. Listen, <clears throat> verse 10. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Someone who has got the fear of the Lord won't play games with uh, the Bible. I will jump because of time. Oh. Verse 13. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guy, depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are, upon, are open unto their cry. Listen, brothers and sisters, I beg you, our Lord God has got eyes to see. Our Lord God has got ears to hear. When we pray unto Him, listen, His ears are open unto our cry. He's a father. Oh my. Now listen 16. I don't want this to be, you 
know, to apply it to any. We listen. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Oh. Now 17. The righteous cry. Listen. When you are righteous, yes, it will come a time when you can cry. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and deliver them out of all their troubles. Now listen. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of the broken heart, and say the such as be of a contract spirit. Now listen to verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Can we say amen to that? Amen. amen. Listen, brothers and sisters, there are times when we might feel really miserable. Let us not forget Isaiah 43. The Lord is saying, when you are crossing the river, I am with you. When you are in trouble, I am with you. There was a time when the disciples of Jesus Christ on the Sea of Galilee, they could see the trouble coming, the waves and everything. None of them jumped out of the boat. They ran to Jesus. Why? Because they trusted Him. They knew that this is the one who can help us. When you read the Bible, listen, brothers and sisters, John chapter 15. Oh, yes, I must read it because we just don't want to. John chapter 15, let us go there. John chapter 15. You know, today it's a message of encouragement because really, um, Yes, all over the earth, the bride of Jesus Christ is going through terrible, terrible hardship. I'm telling you, some of us, we are in contact with the brethren left and right. And sometimes when we hear, say, Lord, this is your son, this is your daughter. But... Uh, let us not be troubled. Let us not be dismayed. Let us not be discouraged. This is the time for us to cry unto Him. Because His ears are open unto our cry. And as the Bible says here, John chapter 15, I will read for you. Verse uh, 5. No, no, I will start from uh, verse 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So, what about everyone who doesn't hear the word of God? How can they be clean? Verse 4. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Verse 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Amen. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. This is the time for each one of us to have personal experiences with Jesus Christ. Remember 2 
Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 14 to 18, the Lord Jesus Christ is asking all of us to come out of everything which is contrary to his spirit. Yes. As the brother was reading, in the later times, people will, uh, you know, be seduced. They will be deceived. But the Lord Jesus Christ is calling all of us to be out of all those confusion. That's number one. And the very same Second Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 14, he says, I will walk in you. I will dwell in you. He says, now in verse 15, John chapter 15, he says, abide in me. There must be a relationship between Jesus Christ and his bride. Did you notice since we start sharing the word of God, we are pointing everyone to Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. You can come to see me, say, brother, I need this, I need that. If I have something to share, I can share with you. But that won't sort out your problem. I can promise you. The one who can sort everything is Jesus Christ. Because he's not surprised. He's not, he's not surprised when it comes to challenges. He's not surprised. He's God. If you could, you know, make the Red Sea, separate the Red Sea, for his children to cross your problems my problems are not bigger than the Red Sea I can Amen. promise you Amen. each time when we go we have an opportunity to go to Israel I'm telling you when you look at the size of the Red Sea you can't even see the one who's standing the other side But the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea on a dry land. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What we have to do as his children, we must fear him. We must obey him. We must trust him. We must call upon him. Remember Jeremiah 33. Oh, yes, I must read it. Yes, yes, I must read it. I must read it. We spoke once about this. Uh, phone call. You know. Here in Australia, we have uh, uh, emergency numbers when you want to report for uh, uh, child abuse, uh, you know, women abuse or whatsoever. But now, we are giving to each one of us a phone number if you want to talk to God. And this is a free toll number. Church of the Living God. A free <laughs> phone number. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Listen to what the Bible says. This is God, our Heavenly Father, speaking to each one of us. Verse 3. Call unto me. And I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Hallelujah! This is, listen brethren, this 
number is available 24 hours a day. You can call upon him 24 hours a day. It's not, it's not like when you call, they're telling you they, they put you on a voice message. Now they say, no, wait, wait. Uh, because uh, the operator is still busy, you know. They say, yeah, now you are number 33 in the queue. Uh, now you are number uh, 20. You wait for one hour. You are number 5 in the queue. No, this number is available 24 hours a day. You are in trouble, please ring Jeremiah 33, verse 3. The Lord is there, ready to, to hear your call and to answer you and to show you great and mighty things which you don't even know. A free number to every child of God. Hallelujah. Listen. Brothers and sisters, my time is fast gone, and uh, oh my God, we have to read. Maybe. Yes, the Lord willing, we shall continue next week. But uh, in summary, time is fast spent. Let us not follow what others are doing. You know, sometimes when uh, you find yourself, I know many people when they found themselves in a group and they feel comfortable when the group is doing something. It's like when we are driving, we are on our way to Brisbane on the highway, the speed limit is 110. Yes, all of us are driving 110. You see someone driving 120, 130. And then you want to follow him. Say, oh yeah, 130, yes, I can also do likewise. If there is a, a camera, all of you, you are in trouble. You won't say, yes, I was driving 120, 130 because I saw XYZ driving 130. You will be punished by the law. Now there are people, because they see the crowds, you know, in a denomination, they say, yeah, because there are so many in this church, that, they, it, that means that uh, God must be there. Remember, Jesus Christ could say, fear not, little flock. Let us not follow the crowds, because as it is right now, the crowd is far away from God. Let us remain in the word of God. And when we are in trouble, let us run to Jesus. May God reach you, bless you. Shall we stand as we are going to pray? Precious Heavenly Father, by thy grace, we could just give what was given unto us. Once again, thank you for correction. Yes, we must respect thy words, and each one of us, we must fear thee. Oh Lord, you know all our trials, temptations challenges, everything that thy bride here on earth is going through. Without you, we can do nothing. Without you, we are nothing. Oh, Father, we can't run to anyone. We can only run unto thee. If you don't answer unto our prayers, the unbelievers will say, but where is their God? Oh, Father, not unto us, not unto us, 
give praise and glory to Jesus Christ. You know our trials, problems, whatsoever, more than ourselves. We just surrender everything unto Him. Remember, our family members, many of them don't fear you. Many of them don't even believe you. Many of them are not even saved. Father, we are praying for them. You can touch each one of them and make miracles to bring them unto yourself. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. There is nothing that is too hard to thee. Oh, Heavenly Father, remember all the families of thy children. Thank you, Father, for thy word. Keep us in thy word. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Shall we sing the last song? Song number 326. Song number 326. Love lifted me. 326. <clears throat> Love lifted me. <clears throat> I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters lifted me now see my love lifted love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love
Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted, love lifted me.